haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before listening on. In order to solve part A, we're going to use the concept of conservation of angular momentum. So here we have the cockroach labeled M1, the disc can be labeled M2, and then the radius of the disc is shown as a capital R. We can set up the expression for the initial angular momentum of the system. To do that, we simply need to recall that angular momentum is equal to an object's rotational inertia multiplied by its angular velocity. Notice that for the cockroach, the rotational inertia is going to equal m times capital R squared. And that's because for any particle-like object, we use this expression to represent the rotational inertia. For the disk, it's almost the same expression, except we have to insert a factor of one half into the equation. So that would be the rotational inertia of the disk. Thus, the initial angular momentum can be set up as follows. We have the cockroach value right here and then the disk right here. Once again, notice the factor of one half for the disk. Now, after the cockroach walks towards the center of the disk, we'll notice that the distance from the cockroach to the center will now be half of the radius. So when we set up the final angular momentum, we'll have to make sure to cut this radius in half. Now, the conservation of angular momentum allows us to take the initial momentum and set it equal to the final momentum. Now in part A, we're being asked to calculate the final angular velocity, which appears in this term as well as this one, so we can factor it out. We could then square the term r divided by 2. On the right side, we can factor out the initial angular velocity. Let's call this term over here 1 fourth mass 1 times radius squared. And then we'll divide both sides of the equation by this term in parentheses. If we wish to simplify the cluster of terms in parentheses, we can divide out an r squared from each of those terms. We recall that the mass of the cockroach, or m1, was given as just m in the question, and then the mass of the disk, or m2, was given as 4m. So we can make those substitutions for m1 and m2. Inside the parentheses, we can multiply each term by 4, We could then see inside the parentheses we're going to have 12m over 9m. If we cancel a factor of m and then reduce 12 ninths, we get 4 thirds multiplied by the initial angular velocity. That initial angular velocity was given to us in the question, so we can just plug in now. And when we simplify that, we get a value of approximately 0.347 radians per second. So that would be the new angular velocity after the cockroach moves towards the center. Now for part B, we're being asked about kinetic energy. We know that when objects are rotating, their kinetic energies are one half times the rotational inertia times the angular velocity squared. But we also know that rotational inertia of a system is equal to its angular momentum divided by its angular velocity. So we can actually make a substitution. We're going to take this expression for the rotational inertia and plug it into our kinetic energy formula we could then cancel a factor of omega. So this would represent the overall kinetic energy of a rotating system. So we can set up the ratio of the final to the initial kinetic energies by using this expression for kinetic energy. Notice that we use subscripts of f for the final values and i for the initial values. We can see, of course, the one-halves will cancel. We also know that the final angular momentum was equal to the initial angular momentum, so those will cancel as well. Therefore, the kinetic energy ratio simply becomes the ratio of the final angular velocity to the initial angular velocity. We can plug in those known values, and we get 1.33. So that would be the correct answer to part B. For part C, what accounts for the change in the kinetic energy? All we have to do is note that as the cockroach walks towards the center of the disk, it's doing positive work on the system. So that positive work will increase the total kinetic energy of the system. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for other videos. You're welcome to send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to respond via YouTube.